Nou, voordat ze nog op moeten, zijn wij in ieder geval, wij prijzen onszelf gelukkig om backstage te zitten met de Paladins, de Reunion Tour. En we hebben ze allemaal bij ons hier, jawel, Brian Fee, Dave Gonzalez en jawel, Thomas Easley on the bass. Yes. Welcome guys to Blues Moves Radio. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, the big question. Who came up with the Reunion Tour idea? Well, we've had a lot of offers over the years. Why did we stop playing? Can we play some more? And and uh, you know, we always wanted to do it, but we just had to go do some other things for a while. But uh, last year here at this festival, maybe you should ask Brian the story because yeah. he's the one that put the put the fire in the in the can, saying, "Hey, maybe we should get together." So. Ask him. I was here last year at this festival with a band called the Cadillac Angels and uh, very good band, very good players, upright bass, big hollow body guitar. So when the audience saw Brian, they said, where are the other two guys? <laughs> <laughs> so when I got home, Herman from the festival emailed me and, and said, this is the 25th anniversary of the festival. Uh, what is the chances of getting the Paladins here? And I just emailed Thomas, I emailed Dave, and here we are. Yep. It was nice. We played here before a couple of times. And we've been to Holland so many times. This is our favorite place. We've been on tour, man, probably 40, 50 times over here over the years. So many beautiful festivals and, and great club scene. And uh, so when they said it was the anniversary of, of, of this festival, we thought, man, it's good timing for us been over five years since we played. It was a nice time to knock the dust off it. Well, knock the dust off if you look after if the people are, who are walking around and everybody has still a Paladin's uh, shirt of, <laughs> of, of sweater or uh, the garage shirts that you uh, brought today. They still keep them in, in pristine position and <laughs> they are in the front of the stage, I can promise you. Good, really cool. That's going to be great, man. It's so nice to be back, really is. Do you, do you even have a good one? Did you have a lot of rehearsals before you said, now we are capable of doing our job? Probably you, everybody did his job in his own instrument, but together again is another piece of work. Yeah, yeah we did. We had some rehearsals together in, uh, in uh, when was that? We came out. Yeah, about a month. Beginning of April. Yeah, beginning of April, uh, we all got together out in Texas where Dave lives now, and we, we camped out with our amp out. <laughs> at uh, Dave's new studio, the Red Horse studio, um, and we just worked uh, there for a week solid, every, every day for a week, uh, about, six, uh, about six or seven hours a day, just trying to remember how the stuff used to come together. And, um, and then at the end of it, we had one gig in town in Austin. We played a, a, a big party. So, and, uh, Gigs in Austin isn't, isn't a problem, isn't it? No, we had a lot of offers to play some gigs over there, and we, we finally just, we had to play some kind of show before we came back over here to play a big festival, and um, we're very lucky. We got a, we got a nice, uh, really nice show in Austin, and then we thought, okay, I think we can do it. Let's do it. And then we also, I can tell you, myself, I said, okay, now i got to go practice. The, uh, the, uh, the day before yesterday, you played Paradiso, Amsterdam, yes. Brian. Yeah. It's a great show. <laughs> it was great being there. The audience was unbelievable. They were just right from the first note. They were just right with us, and it really made it easy to play. The room sounded good. The band was playing good. Dave was on. He was tearing it up, and just it was a good night. Really good night. Is it etching to get together and maybe some new songs in Paladin style that? Somewhere in your heart or in your limbs is merging up. 
you know we, we we could keep making records we made a lot of records in the past and we were we were trying to keep almost reinventing the sound of the paladins every record we tried to have a new different sound and you know sometimes it would shock people or surprise them but then later on they really liked it and and you know we, we you can't have the same sound every time even though it's the same guys you still have to try to write a better song try to play better and try to record it better i mean you just you just got to keep trying to do that so that's a struggle as a band i can remember a concert in doran roshi when i don't know probably you would said do you want still the old shit <laughs> 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 you played all the new songs and they did get into the reaction you used to and you said okay we picked <laughs> and i and have <laughs> yeah we, we we've kind of been in. immersed in separate projects uh yeah. I I uh, am a recording engineer, so my head has to be always with wh whoever my client is. You know, I have to be in, that. and so I'm yeah. not sitting around thinking about writing more Paladin songs. Yeah. Now Dave's he, he's just re his band, the Stone River Boys, just a released band. a record. Yeah. So yeah. that takes all the energy you have. And For then the Brian's last two years, yeah. The number yeah. one the number one drummer in Phoenix. So he's got to learn everybody's songs and, and play everybody else's songs. So we're all busy. We're all, we're all busy. totally busy. You all evolve. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's what you want to say. Yeah. I saw you in the Hacienda Brothers a couple of years ago and you got a new party. But another question, you, you moved to Austin. Well, Musical climate or the, the climate and all? We, we Paladin, <coughs> Paladin's always played in Austin a lot. We've been playing there since 1982 was our first yeah. ever time there. And uh, we played so many times at Antone, so many times at the Continental Club and um, the Hot Rod Roundup. I mean, a lot of shows in Austin. Really good place for the Paladins to play. And uh, But I went, I went over there two years ago when my colleague Chris Gaffney was sick. He was the lead singer of the Hacienda so Brothers. The yeah, and he uh, was my good friend. He was our, our good friend. He played together on one Paladins record with us, and um, he made a lot of good records. Then I started working with the Hacienda Brothers, me and Chris, and we formed that band. We came over here a few times, but he got real sick. He got liver cancer. And uh, so when he was sick, the Hacienda Brothers kind of stopped playing, but we were trying to get money to help him with his medical. So um, I, I went as many places as I could to uh, to play. Matter of fact, the very first place I went to was Arizona. Brian played on the first two benefits for Chris that we had. And then I went to Texas after that, <clears throat> hooked up with a bunch of good musicians in Austin. A lot of good players. And uh, they all knew Chris. They all knew the Paladins. They all knew the Hacienda Brothers. And they all wanted to help out. So we went on tours while we were on tour. I ended up starting to make a record with some of these guys over there in Austin. They're called the Stone River Boys. And the, the, the guy, main guy's Mike Barfield. And he was a good friend of Chris's too. He was one of the first guys that said, hey, if you need me to come out and sing or help out, I'll go, I'm into it. And uh, so it was really nice. We toured around and sent money home to Chris's wife. Unfortunately, you know, Chris passed away. But uh, he, was, he was really a, a great guy, and um, I, I enjoyed doing that. It was so different for me to do the Hacienda Brothers and not be the front man the whole time, not be lead guitar the whole time, to back up a singer. And, uh, you know, I never got to really do that before. It was always just us playing just the trio. Sometimes we would have a special guest. We've backed up some yeah. nice people in the Paladins and um, some mostly harmonica players and, um, and, and, and that's good too. And a harmonica player to me as a guitar, backing up a harp is so much like uh, backing up a vocalist. You know, you really have to keep, you really have to watch them and listen where they're going and, and you know, we... we the last we, gig, we, we, the, the last time that we played, the last time we walked off stage together, we were uh, playing with um, Barbara Lynn. Barbara Lynn, uh, who's got the big hit, uh, "If You Should Lose Me, You Lose a Good Thing." Yeah. And uh, so, you know, through the years, we've been a great band for for we somebody that does. Charlie Musselwhite over yeah. here on big tour one time, Katie and that Webster, was great. Katie Hollywood Webster and Fats, the, yep. and uh, this yep. goes on. We, we we were the the core band for a lot of artists that. Uh, didn't want, didn't, couldn't carry a, a full lineup the whole time, so we were always ready to go on that. Really good. Is it 